I am at the Tri-State Antique Market in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. This is a big antique show. This is the last one of the season, so a lot of people have come out. We're going to take a look and see what we can find to flip for a profit, or maybe to add to our collections. Or if we're lucky, both of those things. This is a big meet, and so the chances are we're going to find things we collect as well as things that we can buy for resale. That's part of the fun of being in this business, is you get to indulge your own collections as well. There are other shops in Lawrenceburg. I have a date with a pickup from a client of a bunch of Holt Howard, so I'm not going to be able to go to those shops today. But there sure are. Usually where there's a big antique fair, you will see antique shops in the vicinity. We get our $4 out and in we'll go. My first tattoo. Actually, that's the hand stamp to get back in because I'm intending to buy some things and I'll need to go back and forth from the car, especially because, as usual, I am going into a huge antique show with, gee, surprise, <laughs> no cart. Interestingly enough, a lot of the people in this front row are selling just sort of whatever and they come late, and so that's why a lot of people like to start with them. Let's take a look. Okay, that's cute. Play school. One of these... These were made in Japan around the time Kurok was popular, these trays here. Well, this is a deal. This is elegant depression glass. This is Fostoria's Trojan pattern with that little fan there. And for $18, I think that's pretty good. I expect that this is about 35 to 40 these days. It used to be 65 or 75 back in the heyday of elegant glass. And boy, were there some good deals on jewelry. I have a pile right there. I think I'm going to add this one. It's a beautiful day. Okay, I'm going to put your mug down. Oh, yeah, $7. We'll take that, too. Okay. Well, that was fast. I literally went to the first booth, spent $130, and already had to come back to the car. That's a new record. <laughs> I haven't gotten past the first booth yet. But I do have this really fun Santa mat and a bag full of cool stuff. The crazy thing is that's almost more than I found at this meet the entire time I was here last time. But last time I came right at the end of the meet and I got some last minute bargains and some cool stuff. But I think this time, uh, boy, I'm going to wish I brought more money. Like I said, part of the reason the first line of dealers is popular is because they get here last. She said she's not having another show till May, so her prices were really good. These people are still getting it out of the car. So this is why a lot of people come early to these things. Got married on the same day I see a radio back there that looks interesting. Let's go look at that. <laughs> this is an Arvin, probably made in Japan, although Arvin was an American company. But that looks more like a Japanese style. So let's see if we can tell. Nope, still made in Columbus, Indiana. At this point, $40. Looks like a lot of the buildings in Columbus, Indiana, which is incredibly modernist. This old crucifix has a neat look for $25. Chip carved. Looks like something from about 1910 or 20. Cute little evening bag. This may be Whiting and Davis. Or not. 125 on this pretty decent looking dinette set with the really cool chairs. They need a little bit of work, but that double dot in the back is something different. That seems like a good price. I always like these siesta wear mugs. You see them sometimes with a holder. They have these nice mahogany veneer jackets. They usually crack, so it depends on fading and cracking, but it looks like it's in good shape overall. This guy's got a cute face here. Little ashtray. This is Wedgwood's Copper Lester Revival from the 30s. You can see the mark there. The white background was not something done originally much on Copper Lester, but very popular in this era, which is 1930s. This ashtray is Lawrence Welk Bubbles in the Wine Champagne Bubbles. Made by Ceramic Craft from San Clemente, California, 1960s. Oh, we're going to spend some time with this table for $5 each, all the jewelry in the plastic bins. I had to try a few of these on because size-wise, these can 
be difficult, but these three just fit me. And if they fit me, they usually fit my customer. And they're big and they're chunky. They're no name, but for $5 a piece, I mean, they're such a look. Just can't go wrong for that price. There's a bunch more in there. If they fit better, I would take them. And then this is pressed celluloid to look like coral from the Second World War. I think this could do well out west, and it looks like it actually might be Native American made because it's got toe he little toe heave marked on the back. And $65? Was that $65 once? Well, in any event, it's $5 now. I'll take it. There's lots of damascene. There's lots of nice stuff in here, and there's plenty of wearable stuff. And at $5 each, there's even more I could be buying. But I'm trying to be selective, and I selected this, Arc de Triomphe. Eiffel Tower. These are Parisian scenes. It has an Eiffel Tower chain hang. That's definitely going in the bin. Thermoset plastics from the 60s do sell. It's a very specific look. I like the ones that are signed. This one is actually Listener, so it is signed. That might be a possibility. Well, this gal actually shopped from me at Springfield, so she pointed out all the things she bought from me in the showcase, so I won't try to buy them back. <laughs> These are neat. These are actually place card holders from when you would have little luncheons. And see the little wires on them? That's where the place card would clip in. These were made in Czechoslovakia about 1935. That's a cute set. And then this is how half dolls were done. This one was rather glamorous. And she came with the legs, which is unusual. This is made in Germany. So you could have done her as some sort of a full figure with maybe a big petticoat as a pin cushion or something. They are only asking 12 for the torso because those are much more common, but 40 for the legs because they're hard to find. And she's being kind enough to let me look at the stuff in the back of the car too. It looks like a bunch of cameos and porcelain pins. Some long necklaces. Here's some bibs. These are Whiting and Davis in the gold and the silver. Those might be nice. I'll have to inquire about those. I am out of those right now. I like this big question mark pin. We'll have to ask about that. I've done well with question marks, and she's got two. Whoops. Let's not break them. This is a neat big basket here. This big pin from the 19... Well, it's Boucher. Interesting. I was thinking it was 1940s, and I think Boucher might have been around back then. It's Pave. This is very nicely crafted, also pavé. Well, I'm going to ask about these. Boy, does she have this stuff. She's got some really wonderful things. And she was telling me that she mainly deals in gold and silver. And so the costume, the higher end, she'll sell online. But the fun stuff that a lot of my customers like, that's why it's in $5 bins, because it's end of season and she just doesn't have time to chase the money on eBay. Well, isn't that great for folks like me who have more shows coming. Every foot a man. Wow. I assume that this was actually a political advertisement. Maybe he was short or something, but I just love that. It's very funny. I'm going to get it. Well, I've been here about a half an hour and I've gone through exactly five booths, so I've also spent a lot of my money already. This is Kurok with the Kachina. That's a pretty good price because it's a Kachina. These were popular in the 70s, and they're popular again now, these Budweiser crates. This was a premium, and a lot of people kept them and used them for storage, so you see them around in the States now. Great shade on this great gazelle lamp. These can be pretty valuable. Let's see what he's got on it. 120 That's actually not a bad price having the shade and all, truthfully. And more jewelry. This flower power pin is $5. This black one is 10 Very encrusted. That's actually fairly well made. Avoid what's in the H sink. I like these old things from the churches. Present last Sunday, attendance today, offerings, all this kind of stuff. It's only $10. I think I should get that. Well, he suggested taking the slips out because they might fall out, so I did, and I set them on top of this English pub table, which is only $60. It needs one piece of veneer, but that is a howling deal. They'll sell for about $300 in the right place. A lot of people in the outside. This is definitely more than we're here last time. I haven't even really gotten into the main part of the show yet. Here is a bunch of hull drip glaze and crest stone in various colors. You see a lot of the brown. You don't see as much of this yellow or the greens. I'm looking for saucers for one of my viewers, so I just want you to see I tried. I don't see any of your color here, though, unfortunately. You know if we had more time, I would be trying these hats on. 
but I will take advantage of this opportunity to say if you have not clicked the thumbs up, please do like this video and leave us a comment. We always are glad to hear from you. In the middle of all this pretty glass is this trunk vase. And in the very bottom you see an N with a circle. At least I hope you do. Way down in the bottom there's an N in a circle and it has a line underneath it. If that line touches the edges it's a reproduction otherwise it's like this one a genuine Northwood piece from about 1910. They also have this Imperial Chocolate Slag Owl set from the 1960s which was based on what was being done in the 1880s. But Imperial did these in the 60s. You can see right there Caramel Slag end of day art glass. Not really end of day in this case because they knew what they were doing and did it deliberately. They weren't just using what was left at the end of the day. I have always done well with the ice and that ice crusher, but this one, the metals, the tops are metal, the bottoms are plastic. You open it here. This is fine. This is coarse, but this one has a bunch of chips, unfortunately. Now we're getting up into the rest of the show, but we still have some dealers who've set up here under these trees, so we're going to take a look really quickly. Ooh, I see a cocktail shaker I like, but it is missing its stopper, which is too bad. It's got the rooster on it. I guess that's for your morning after drink. Well, I have to say the weather is just perfect this morning, and I think that's why you've got so many people out. That and the fact that it's the last show of the season here. That little iron bench for $50 would be worth recovering for that price. I personally wouldn't leave it Paisley because Paisley is either Victorian or 60s and it does not look right to me with a 1920s neoclassical base. This is a cute Olympic thermic jug, something I haven't seen before from about 1960, priced at $40. Wow, if you knew what you needed for your crash, these nativity figures at a dollar each are a deal. This is all the dollar table, and here's two space-related things. Now, one's got a chip, but this one, oh, it's got a crack. Darn it. Because it shows all of these early space flights, and people in Florida would eat that up. Little Starburst-type clock. This one is a Lux. It's a little corroded. That might be able to be fixed. I wonder if it works. We'll have to ask. I don't see a price. The hot pad is Georges Briard with the balloon. That's actually a pretty good deal for $12. And here are the rest of the space glasses. And they want $90 for this set, so $10 each. I don't think of Blue Mountain Pottery as serving wear too much, but here are three of the little platters. And it does have one of their logos, BMP Canada. Those are kind of neat. $25 each seems like about the right price for those. Look at this great shade on that piece. Oh, and we're going to lose some lamps here. I think I'll hold on to this one for them for a minute while they figure out what to do. It's 200 on that, so we don't want it to fall down. The Treasure Craft Wall Pocket. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see these very much anymore. Would you do 15 on that? You had 18. Absolutely. Are you sure? Okay, great. Thank you. Well, I was having fun in this booth, and it turns out that uh, Shannon, the owner who just sold me the Treasure Craft, wall pocket, which I'm very happy about, is a viewer, so that's really cool. This is a great head here. This is 120, and they do run high because it's the Polynesian with the hibiscus by Marwall, and Marwall is considered one of the better chalkware makers of this type. They were American. Look at the eyes. The eyes are really expressive, and that's why people really like this one in particular. And interestingly enough, I have the Queen's Beast by Minton, the big set. Here is a tray. They did a bunch of trays with the Queen's Beast. So this one shows the Yale of Beaufort. And underneath it, the Falcon of the Plantagenets. So your eBay store is Curly's Cupboard. Yes. Excellent. Well, that's great. We'll tell people about that. Great. We you... have uh, 1,400 things on there. Wow. But that's pretty good. I, I have maybe a couple hundred in my store, and I've been working a lot to get that large. <laughs> it's, it, it really is a full-time profession. That's great, though. And how nice, because you're coming into your off-season here. So, yes. yeah, very cool. This guy is a multitasker. He is a holder of lamps and a holder of dogs, and they're both going different directions. Uh, well, that was really fun. That's the first viewer I've met today. And, you know, I am staying to the outside edge because this seems like where a lot of dealers I didn't see the last time are. 
So I'm learning about this show. This is only the second time I've been here. They have appropriate prices on their ceramics. The Van Briegel is nice. This is a Van Briegel piece here for 79 that you don't see so often. This is also Van Briegel. Sometimes people don't recognize the solid color glazes because they're used to these ones that variegate. That one way is a good one. Anything that you see that's embossed is going to sell for more money. The road closed is also embossed, and those are earlier embossed, meaning that they're essentially stamped so that there's relief above the surface. Here's some more older embossed signs. And then if you find them with the reflectors in them, they're really the most valuable. Seeing this plain depression glass console for 15 when I paid 15 for the Bostoria Trojan definitely makes me feel like I got a good buy. Only $6 on this little smoker dog. That dog shouldn't be smoking. I'm sure that's Japanese. The paper label is just gone. A couple of apple pattern here. 25 on the smaller, but it's got the green worn off. That's part of the reason that this... Uh, all of these things that you see by Fire King and Pyrex, anything with screen painted surfaces, it does eventually wear out. And so that's the reason that these are in shorter supply now. Lots of children's books. You see a lot of these little Rand McNally Jr. Elf books. They were done as competition for little golden books. And you have the Whitman Wonder books. Very neat umbrella here, $30 with the Lucite handle. Look how cool that handle is. And with a great handle like that, that's not actually a bad price at all. Then a bunch of dollar hankies, that's a bargain. And since it's the last show of the season here, well, you're gonna see the Christmas coming out early. Well, you can tell it's after 9 a.m. because the crowd is thickening. Everybody is up and at it now. Next to this pottery craft base, which I recognize because this one's in my book is this owl string holder. I just sold one of these. You see the hole over the beak. That's where the string comes out. $18 is not a bad price. These are not that old. They're barbicone pottery, which is out of Laurelston, England, which is where a lot of the potters were based. I like this ombre glaze on this piece. They do say it is, in fact, Weller, and I believe them because Weller was made close to here. Folks in this area tend to know their pottery. Here's one of these lights where you could separate the red from the green. It's an old bike light, so of course that way you can see which side you're on, and it's got the divider down the middle. Interesting that they mounted it like that. It was a flashlight style before. It's $18, and here is a different version of it with two separate lights that clipped on. These are called Delta lights, and they have a nice rocket shape, and they are $30 for the pair. Bicycle stuff is definitely collectible. It's not just the guy on American Pickers who likes this. I have a friend in Packwood, Washington, who primarily brings bicycles and related things and cleans up at that show. I don't know what I would do with it, but these old hay trolleys that ran on wires of the hay loft so that you can move hay bales around, they just have such a cool look, and somehow it's on my bucket list of things to own as a dealer. They're pricing about 65 each here, which is actually pretty good. Again, I'm not sure what you would do with one of these, but you could make it a rolling base for a table if you had four of them, I guess. This little Weller vase is cute with the apples on it. $35 is not bad for that little piece. I like the wall pocket on the right. It is vintage Hager, and older pieces of Hager like this often do not have a label. They had paper labels, if any. This one does not have any. I've already looked at the back. It's $35. That seems pretty reasonable. I think the older Hager is still not completely understood. People seem all knocked out about the 80s, 90s stuff because they've seen it, and it's big, and it's often marked. But some of the early pieces are still not really well known. Look at these really fun fish faces, $165. These are kind of fun and funky, and I've never seen them before. They're Italian hand-painted wall pockets in the shape of butterflies from about 1970. And they do have the Made in Italy mark, 1972, REM Originals mark right there. And interestingly enough, I thought they were wall bases, but look, it actually has a little cork in it. So is this supposed to be a flask? That's interesting. Yes, I think these were actually liquor bottles. Italy did a lot of figural liquor bottles around this time, but I've never seen the butterflies before. That's very interesting to me. 
think they've got $30 each, and that's not a bad price, considering there's something not. This is an original wiener dog boot jack, boot scraper, boot remover from about 1920. That's pretty neat. We usually see prices around 135 to 150 on these if they're old, and this one is. I'd really like to pick up another fallout shelter sign. I don't know that it's going to be cheap enough. It doesn't have a tag on it. And his other stuff is priced fairly, but not giveaway prices. But I'm going to ask anyway. He does have neat old electric clocks here you don't see in very good condition anymore. And his, like, like they really are great. I like the Dr. Pepper and the yeah, she, diamond shape there. The old Speedel watch bands and little accessories would have gone on a stand like this in the 1960s. Well, it was very kind of him. He let me have the fallout shelter sign for 25, which is really the most I like to pay for them. But it is new old stock, and people are definitely interested. I bet this sells right away. This looks like one of these booths where you dig, so we're going to do a little digging here. I think this looks pretty cool. It's old. It's an amateur painting, but it's pretty well done from its day, and it's just got interesting aging and the colors. I could see that being something really fun to work into a decor. They've got boxes of stuff, so we're going to go dig. Yeah, this is definitely the kind of place you could spend a lot of time and a lot of money. Postcards. I like the ones with the letters. Greetings from Baltimore. This poor decanter, if there is a top for it, is a Blinko, but the ruby flash was put on by Rainbow Glass. Rainbow was not part of Viking back then, and so they mainly decorated other people's glass. And then in the 50s, Viking bought Rainbow and turned it into their blown glass subsidiary. Wow, I don't know if these folks are cleaning out storage lockers or if this is an old bunch of stuff from a dealer. I see Peters and Reed Cavalier tumblers in there. Or maybe they're low vases. Oh, well, there we go. They're actually mugs. Those might be a good deal. Dickens bookends in the bottom. I wonder how this stuff is priced. Okay, well, it's priced retail. This is Bradley and Hubbard. The Charles Dickens are good. 65 is not a bad price for the quality. But I have to say, based on this presentation, I would have thought it might be a little less. Looks like Mary Hadley or Louisville Stoneware here. But it's the John B. Taylor signature, which is related to all of that, of course. An ear of corn is calling for you. There's former President Jimmy Carter, who just turned 98 years old. An old copy of The Atlantic. They just sure have a lot of stuff in here, but it's very random, so you just have to dig and then see what they'll do, I guess. Zenith Radio from the 1960s. Bunch of sheet music. Bunch of turquoise pottery. I wonder who did these pieces. It looks like a variety. The oldest one in here is this green and blue. This is an early brush McCoy out of the Onyx line. So that one's from about 1920 at the latest, whereas the rest of these are 1930s vintage. Yeah, they seem to be giving about 25% discounts because this is their last show of the season. But I haven't found anything that really grabbed me. It's not that there aren't things in here that could sell. She's got the Franciscan picture that I looked at. It's from the 60s, but it has a chip. It just seems like everything is just slightly a little damaged, a little worn or a little more money than I want to spend. But I bet if I spent lots of time digging, I would find stuff in here. Ah, cameras. I still have a bunch, but I am starting to run down on the old ones, so we'll see what these are priced. Here is a very clear example of what is flow blue and what isn't. So let's take a look at this, because then we'll all be on the same page here. So this is definitely flow blue. The transfer was put under the glaze. The clear glaze on top made the decal run a little bit. And so it's very blurry. It's a little indefinite. You see where the blue is literally flowing into the rest of the piece. So it's not crisp and clear. This, on the other hand, not flow blue. Even though there's just a little bit of a run beyond, that is not the same as where the whole thing is flowing. This is blue transferware. No flow at all. 
So there is the difference between flow blue and not flow blue. And that is why I'm fond of saying that the English didn't like it because to them it was factory seconds. That's why it all went to the United States and that's where the collectors are. And this piece, which they have priced fairly at 45, is so flowing you can't even read the pattern name on the back. This is one of the English Staffordshire pieces from the 1870s. All right, here's an enclosure full of different spaces. Lots of spaces. The table shaped like a tree is not very old, but it's kind of a neat looking thing. A whole bunch of jugs with salt glaze. You can see the, the salt glaze gives it this shiny effect. And it was a particular early way to glaze crockery and stoneware to make it not leak. We have pieces from Ohio for 300, Louisville, Kentucky for 275. These are going to be more here because of local interest. Jeffersonville, Indiana. Such an amazing and varied group of shapes and colors and sizes in crockery. It definitely makes it fun to collect. Where are those from, do you think? Uh, I would say Mexico or at least South America. Yeah, they look yeah. Latin American yeah. and they're all ceramic. They're very cute. That's a neat set. How much is that set? I let you have the whole set for 20 bucks for this apartment. Gosh, that is a good deal. And this is Marc Gallet, but when it's that big and it's right where you can see it, that is trying way too hard. That makes that a fake. It is not real. Not real Gallet cameo glass. This is done using sandblasting rather than acid etch. It's just not right. And the big signature is a big clue. Well, setting a table for the holidays is always fun, and they've got a bunch of this spode Christmas tree at good prices, I would say. Only $5 for the little dish here. Now, this one is Nico Japan, which was a similar look. Look how similar the design is. But Spode did not have teddy bears in theirs, and it's a little bit more refined. But this piece, this old piece, I think is really amazing with the point set is. It is a big tankard. It has the Royal Nippon mark on the bottom. So this is going to date to about the 19-teens. It does have Moriage beading around the top. It is priced at, let's see, only $20. That seems like a real bargain. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.